Joining us now to review some of the headlines of today's newspapers from around the world is Arise News Analyst Emmanuel Great Malabite Efeni. <laughs> Good morning, Ruben. <laughs> Good morning, Rufai. The one and only Malabite. <laughs> well, to see you, sir. you know, some of us have more than passing interest in what happens in Calabar. That's Calabar. true. That's true. As stakeholders. Yes, as stakeholders. That's true. <laughs> and I hope Ayade should know that. Sort of. Sort of. <laughs> now let's start. I think he's also himself a Malabite. I'm not too sure. It doesn't, yeah, really. sound, it doesn't sound like one. <laughs> <laughs> How do not, Malabite sound? He doesn't sound like one. He's not from the colony of Malabo. I'm not, I'm not sure it was that privilege. <laughs> <laughs> if I may say so, <laughs> well, that's on a lighter note from Fayadi. <laughs> well, let's re start the review with this day, Nigeria's newspaper of records. The lead story, Southern governors, others rebuke Malami for opposing open grazing ban, say cattle restriction will be vigorously enforced. A Feni Ferris Senate spokesman demand ministers remover. Yes, this, uh, the response to the statement from the Attorney General of the Federation, of course, generating a lot of, um, a lot of reaction. And most of the newspapers have uh, this on their front pages. If I just look at two other newspapers on this story, then we'll talk about it. The Guardian newspaper, you goofed. Akira Dulu, others chide Malami on open grazing comments. AGF, an agent provocateur, says Afeni Fere Hohanese. Umahi, these, those supporting open grazing want the killing to continue. Senior spokesman seeks Malami's sack over utterance. Open grazing is outdated, says Macban. Jibrin, Macban Preton. Patron Gibrin. Now, the Daily Sun newspaper fireworks over open grazing ban. It is unconstitutional, Malami. Those against ban want killings to continue, Umahi. Now, a AGF twisting constitution, or Hanese. Now, when it comes to matters of the constitution, you expect the Attorney General of the Federation to be on top of that situation. So, when the Attorney General Abubakar Kamala may start quoting the Constitution. One should expect that he has done so, and you cannot fault him. But I don't think that is the case in this situation. I just take one short quote. Freedom of movement in the Constitution, which the AGF and others in his camp are using to justify the evil being perpetrated by the Fulani, is for human beings and not animals like cow. Mm. But I think that statement in itself is clear because the freedom of movement, <laughs> the concern mentioned, is for Niger citizens. Mm. You can move everywhere. So Except to- Except cows are citizens of Nigeria. Well, I, I would be surprised if, if, cows if the Attorney General will be thinking in that light. I'm not sure he's thinking in that light. But the other aspect of his speech, or his statement referring to those who sell spare parts, in itself, uh, something that is likely to pitch one group against the other. Very unbecoming of the Attorney General of the Federation. And I'm sure, or I want to believe, the presidency should take note. If they need to make clarification, Ruben, you presidential spokesperson, you know how to make clarification on this matter <laughs> so that we can have proper perspectives. Because as it stands, uh, the statement by the Attorney General of the Federation is reprehensible, is condemnable, and I think those who say he should be relieved of his position, they couldn't have been more correct, if I may use a popular phrase. Mm. Now, if we look at other newspapers, the Daily Sun, the front page of Daily Sun, Shekhar reportedly killed in Iswap Boko Haram clash in Sambisa. Yes, yeah, the same Shekhar, many have been asking how many lives because you recall that on a number of occasions, it has been reported by Shekau was killed. But again, the military authorities will need to confirm that. Now, the New Telegraph newspaper, the same lead story, governors, governor, lawmakers, regional groups, slam Malami, but beneath the photograph, after Ayade 
PDP set to lose another governor to APC. Cross River Governor has always been our member ruling party. Defection timely says Senator Kalu will wish him well. PDP. Yes, Professor Ben Ayade has spent time to justify, defend his defection, which I will just regard as a common defection because it's something that is common among Nigerian politicians. When it suits you, you move to a party A, and when it doesn't, you move back to party B. And, well, I'm sure not many Nigerians will be convinced with the reasons he gave. Because uh, I remember you asked him about the role of a viable opposition in a democracy. And he just danced around that question. Because if all governors of other parties just now move over to, AP, to APC to help the president, according to him, mm. who is sincere, according to him, then our democracy will, will be making mockery of our democracy. Because nobody say you cannot contribute as a governor on the platform of another party to the running of Nigeria. Why do you have the National Economic Council, where governors and the vice president meet? Why do you have the, um, the other one, where the president and, and uh, governors also meet, national... Uh, uh, there's another body where the president meets with all governors. You can always make your contribution from anywhere. But again, political expediency for him, because if you read the Guardian, the this day report, and that's what I want to rely on now, uh, on this Ayade uh, matter, I said Ayade, who lost out in the recent state congress of the PDP, has helped the APC to regain a foothold in the South-South which had come under the full control of the main opposition party with the defection and re-election, of course, of Godwin of Baseki. So, he has done what he has to do. It's not unusual among Nigerian politicians to move from one party to another. But you ask him the question, if PDP wins will, in 2023, hypothetical question, will you return? Well, he said he will offer. Let's move on to other stories. Now, the Vanguard newspaper, the Vanguard newspaper, the lead story, also the Malami story, but there is a story be, be, beneath the photograph, ban on open grazing, Magban, backs governor, that Magban, Meiji Alakatu Breeders Association of Nigeria. Now, the Nigerian Tribune newspaper, above the masthead, Federal government directs Kaduna government, go, government to follow principle of redundancy. I'm sure that intervention by the federal government on the, Malam, on, uh, the Kaduna, lab, Kaduna government labor face-off, we hope is Spain, is, uh, it will yield some results so that there will be some mm. calm in Kaduna state and there will be industrial harmony. And I think that's what it should be. When labor has issues with employers, in this case the state government, you sit down and discuss and move on. Now, the Daily Trust newspaper, how 300 Libya-trained ISWAP fighters conquered Shekau. We are here to get information on Shekau dead military. ISWAP has fulfilled its long-term mission, expert. So, the story about Shekau. Daily Trust seem to have an in-depth story how 300 Libyan-trained ISWAP fighters conquered Sheka. We hope that is the case. Now, the foreign newspapers quickly, in the UK, the Guardian newspaper, expectedly, most, if not all, for all the papers in the UK have that uh, story on the report on the now infamous uh, 1995 Panorama interview conducted by Martin Bashur, the BBC interview, and how the BBC did not take, uh, perhaps did not wade into the concerns raised then. Prince Williams and Prince Harry, they are reacting. The Guardian newspaper of UK, deceitful and damaging. Furious Prince attack BBC over Bashir, and the Duke of Cambridge, Prince Williams, is saying clearly 
that that interview, not discredited program, that uh, it was a major contribut contribution to making my parents, as his parents, Prince uh, Charles and Diana, relationship worse and has since hurt countless um, others. I disagree. Yes, the well. relationship was already worse before. Well, worse. That interview just added to it. Yes, uh, no, uh, that's what it means. It was bad. Uh, it was bad. It made it worse. Yeah. So you cannot fault that. Okay, you can't yes. fault that. Yes. Now, the Daily Mail also reporting the same story. William, BBC lies ruined my mother's life. And of course, Harry, Prince Harry, is also saying that the toxic culture led to her mother's death. Now, I move on to Jerusalem Post, ceasefire at last. Ceasefire, the Jerusalem Post reporting Israel accept truce after 11 day, days of Gaza combat. But if you look, there's another story there. AP Toa, anatomy of an IDF diplomatic fiasco. IDF, the in, is, Israeli Defense Force, how they bomb uh, yeah. the Toa housing, Al Jazeera, and AP, claiming that there were some in, intelligence yeah. officers of Hamas there. And uh, for that in itself has been described as an in IDF diplomatic fiasco. Then just beside, above the master, there's also another story in the front page of Jerusalem Post. Is Hamas unbeatable? Capabilities may have been damaged, but IDF had had difficulty delivering a knockout. Yeah. Yes, but I don't think Hamas should take that as a compliment because Hamas must also rethink its strategy. The strategy of saying it wants to destroy Israel from the face of the earth is not possible. So they should renounce that, join um, the Palestinian Authority, and since there is this push, mm for both parties, the Israelis and the Palestinians, to come to the negotiating table. And that is where uh, Joe Biden, President of America, has a challenge. We need to see him do something different. But, but, the, but the truth has to be said. Uh, it is what Israel created that came back to hunt them in Hamas. I mean, we're all here yes. when uh, Prof. Prof yesterday Prof was saying insight. how they were funding Hamas. And let's to not, undermine the PLO. To undermine the PLO under and Yasser Fatah. Arafat. And to undermine the PLO under Yasser Arafat and Fatah. So, and Hamas, there are many, you know, symbolisms of this. Hamas knows it's difficult for him to win elections. Elections are just around the corner in that area. In fact, when you will look at the symbolism, there are two elections. Israel is trying to wriggle its way through. So a lot of people are saying re revolting at al Hassan Mosque is just a way for uh, Benjamin Netanyahu to be able to stay on in power. Because yes. since the fighting started... The nobody, opposition left to the Bennett. About In fact, the opposition left to the Bennett yeah. said it was going to come from government. The, with the, ma the major challenge, I guess, is to move from conflict management. We've, we've been doing all this while in the Middle East to conflict resolution. Yes. yes. How that is done will require the major role of the United States and other stakeholders. Yeah. I was going to draw attention to uh, the outcome uh, reported on page five. Peace returns as federal government reconciles Kaduna government labor. You know that the federal government waded into yes. it, and I think that the federal government has done very well in that regard to resolve the face-off between Labour and the Cardinal State Government. A ten-man committee has been set up to look at the issues. We've been told that the NLC leader will no longer be arrested and that the workers will no longer go on strike. We hope that all of these uh, terms of agreement will be respected and that there will be peace in Cardinal. Yes. Thank you very much, uh, Emmanuel Feni.